please welcome Christy Terrell Corbin, Clinical Professor of Human Development and Executive Director of the Center for Early Childhood Education and Intervention. Good evening. I'd like to start by asking you to spend a few seconds thinking about your most favorite teacher. What was it about that person that made you feel special? I've had the opportunity to pose that same question to groups of educators over the past year. Here's what they shared with me about their favorite teachers. They believed in me when no one else did. They encouraged me to pursue my interests. They saw me as a person first and a student second. They listened. They truly listened. Fundamentally, what all these educators had in common was that they cared. And caring matters a lot. Nonetheless, care means different things for different students in different communities. In a high poverty community where I co-direct a project entitled Trauma Sensitive Pedagogy, inequities are rampant and trauma can be an almost daily occurrence. Because they care, our educators rush to the scene of a burning apartment building on a weekend morning, comforted a kindergarten child who had spent weeks in a migrant detention camp at the age of four, collected food for children's out-of-school hours, and they lived in fear, the educators lived in fear, that they would do something to trigger a fight or flight reaction in a child who had experienced trauma. Well, these are poignant examples from a community that I have been involved in for almost two decades. These same dire circumstances exist across this country and around the globe. But I ask you, are educators really prepared to take on these challenges? The answer is a resounding no. Nonetheless, I am increasingly seeing educators step up and take on these roles. Why? Because they care. But we must remember that educators themselves are not immune to the challenges and adversities that life can send our way. Just like us, they experienced professional upheaval and personal loss during the COVID-19 pandemic. In some states, they are bearing the brunt of the politicalization of education. And everywhere, sadly, everywhere, just like our children, they are living under the threat of gun violence. With all these burdens and responsibilities, weren't dire consequences in in inevitable? Educators are on the front lines of our society, and this has taken a toll on their mental and emotional health. My colleagues and I have talked to educators in a variety of states across the country. They've shared with us their stories of secondary traumatic stress, burnout, and even compassion fatigue. Figley, who did a lot of work with social workers, termed this the cost of caring. Yet when educators report their secondary traumatic stress or burnout, they're often advised to engage in self-care, journaling, meditation, walking. You're chuckling, right? As if that is going to solve the issue. And you're absolutely right, because that guidance, while self-care is critically important, that guidance suggests that an individual level response 
is sufficient to address a systemic problem. We are at a crisis point in American education. Because of all these burdens and responsibilities, educators are leaving the profession in record numbers. You all saw the headlines in September, and there are still vacancies, yet it's almost May. James Comer, the noted school reformer, once wrote, no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship. But significant relationships don't exist when we have a revolving door of educators. This is really worrisome because education is a critical protective factor that can change the trajectories of children's lives. Think about that. Change the trajectories of their lives. We are at a point that we must acknowledge that this crisis is both an educator mental health issue and a national workforce issue. Therefore, my call to action for all of us is to work together to address the systemic problems that underlie inequities, childhood trauma, and educator stress. These problems are far too complex for any one organization to address alone. When we break down the silos between schools and universities, between policymakers and even businesses and social services, we can come to understand the nature and scope of the issues. You might be sitting there thinking, okay, this sounds great, but how do we do it? We do it by establishing research practice policy partnerships where relationships are built, trust is earned, educators and community members are at every table. Problems are community defined, not researcher defined. Solutions are explored and data are collected. Through partnerships, we establish the infrastructure we need to address these issues. When that happens, teachers get to teach. Social workers engage in proactive versus punitive work with families. And researchers collect culturally relevant data that drives policy. I offer you the words of Jack Shonkoff, the founding director of the Center for the Developing Child. Everyone in a community has a vested interest in everyone else's children because everyone else's children determine the next adult population for a successful society. We all have a role to play in addressing the systemic issues that underlie in inequities, childhood trauma, and educator stress. You don't have to be an educator. You can be a policymaker. You can be a retiree. You can be a business person. You just have to be willing to contribute time and knowledge to a partnership. If you're even thinking of one tiny thing you could do, you've already moved us forward in the right direction. As you leave campus tonight, I ask that you please think about that teacher you thought of at the onset of my talk. Focus on the care that person showed you. Leverage the impact that person had on your life to impact the lives of others. Reach out to a principal, a social worker, a teacher, a community organizer, and simply ask, how can I help? Thank you.